Dr. Ropaomo was founded here in uh, Milano in 2004 by uh, Professor Veronesi and uh, Alberto Costa, ten years after they founded Europa Donna. So we followed the same scheme. It was kind of uh, easy in the beginning. And the purpose was uh, to support men with prostate cancer. And so our extended name is really the European Prostate Cancer Collab Collaboration. Under that name, we are known as collaborating indeed with a number of uh, professional societies in the first place. Uh, second, we have our big sponsors that are the European School of Oncology, uh, the European Association of Virology, uh, the Oncology Centre Antwerp, and newly the ECPC, the European Cancer Patient Coalition. One of the reasons is that prostate cancer uh, covers about um, 3 million people in Europe. We are now composed of a consensus of about 23 people, uh, 23 countries, but we don't have enough human resources to cover it all as much as we really would like to do it. So we are going to work together because in uh, my opinion, we have two definite uh, divisions in uh, what they call nowadays personalized treatment. The first one is that uh, I would like to see uh, personalized as individualized medical treatment, the scientific part and personalized holistic treatment as the social part. And the um, scientific part goes with evidence-based medicine, multidisciplinary, certainly, and uh, following strict rules uh, to improve the patients on a scientific basis. On the other hand, medicine is not a complete science. Medicine is also an art, and that's the social aspect of the disease. Uh, an individual, for me, is a mountain of flesh with uh, DNA and genes and whatever. But if you are a person, you belong to the society. You are a person in a society with your family, um, with your system, National health systems are very, very different in Europe. And so there the treatment, we see it as multi-professional. We think that for every major psychic factor, there is always, on the other hand, a psychotherapeutic uh, problem. It's not because you don't express it, like most men don't, uh, that you don't have it. It's cancer is always an annoying disease, but it's also for the family a fact that it costs money. It's a financial problem the, that you are somewhat rejected with a stigma. It's a social problem. So we really, uh, the purpose uh, for us, us or the people from, the members from Europa Donna, is not, not so much the extension of life because at this moment, uh, the peak of uh, prostatic cancer in Europe is 75 years, and the uh, dead peak is 85. You, very difficult to do better already at the, at the moment. So all of our guys, they claim they want quality of life. That's uh, one of their most important uh, requests. And uh, so for that sake, um, we feel that patients should be observing and having some representation with uh, official medicine. But when it comes to the uh, personalized care, then I think we should play an important role. Because uh, it's not a question, um, you could say it easily by, we say, the, cancer, the patient comes first, and then is cancer. You treat is the patient first. And we are very lucky in uh, prostate cancer. 
About 20 years ago, we could prove that 50% of the newly diagnosed cancers do not need immediate treatment. It took uh, a lot of time to convince a Belgian when he heard the word cancer that it doesn't need to be treatment. But nowadays, no, people know more about cancer. They understand the biology of cancer and they understand, first of all, that we have cancer all the time and that we ourselves cure it. Uh, I must say that's the usual way that cancer is treated by your own immunological system. And the second thing is that when you age up, then you have these uh, specific cancers like prostate cancer that are annoyable, a chronic disease, but it takes at least 15 years to die. And uh, if you're treated well, then it's very difficult to die from prostate cancer. The death rate in our uh, ERSPC is European randomized screening trial is 2.5% after 15 years and 168,000 people. It's always a bet, but it's a good bet. On the other hand, outside in some countries, it's still 16%. So there is a lot of work to be done in Eastern Europe, for instance, uh, and uh, essentially Eastern Europe. Here in Western Europe, Nordic countries, it goes. ERSPC is a screening program, and we started in Antwerp in 1991 with some uh, protocols first to see if it worked. Afterwards, uh, it catched on. We got eight countries to participate. Uh, Finland, Sweden, the Netherlands, France, and Spain, and, uh, and Switzerland. And uh, I must say, we had our problems because uh, screening for a population always brings over treatment. And it took us um, 15 years uh, to discover really that we were over treating the people. We cured these cancers that were no cancers. So when that came on us, at least we had the courage to, uh, to say that this was the truth. And uh, so we went forward by following this as some type of treatment. It's now accepted as a treatment. The great glory came when we had a 13-year follow-up with a 20% uh, diminution of uh, the mortality. And that was published in uh, the <laughs> Big American Journal, New England Journal of Medicine, next to the Big American Study, PLCO. Um, I don't remember how many patients they had, but anyway, <coughs> the American study was negative, and so they decided how we, that European study never could be better. So they gave the two studies a negative figure, D, that means that uh, in the United States, since 1912, 2012, they were not allowed uh, to use PSA as a screening method, was advised against. Now, four years later, hallelujah, we're kind of modestly pleased. Uh, the big uh, United States Preventive Sciences uh, Association uh, confessed that they were wrong, that they think our studies uh, were excellent, and that the American study was flawed, and so now it's a C, which means that everybody again can have the advice to have prostate cancer early detected uh, if he's well informed by the doctor. It's kind of important because no matter what I said this morning, Prostate cancer does not have symptoms. If you don't go for it, you'll never find it. And then the problem is most of the time it's too late, like in the old days before. 
So now we are uh, at this moment in time checking for uh, the best way to do it by finding as many tumors as necessary to be operated, about 20%. And the others that we can leave in peace. That's so. But uh, this is what I call the stratification of the patients. That's the most important. But of course you understand, stratifying uh, at 70, very easy, but at 55, uh, if you have to tell the guy that is a very small cancer, and that his chance of having a, a little cancer is less than 1% still. Um, usually the women insist that he gets his surgery done. The problem is the surgery gets all kinds of complications. So at this time we are living in a new system, but at least it's controlled and uh, so we will go uh, better. But uh, like I said, improving on 2.4% mortality is almost impossible and uh, where we, we go for a quality of uh, life.